hello to all today we'll be going to discuss about the ploidy levels of the different parts of the plant here i have written the sporophyte and here i have written the gametophyte as we know very well that uh, there are two types of the parts one is known as the sporophyte and another is known as the gametophyte we know that the sporophytes are always diploid and the gametophyte is always haploid okay now zygote as we know very well that zygote is the result of the fertilization when a male gamete and a female gamete fuse together then what is formed zygote is formed so male gamete is haploid and female gamete is also haploid so haploid and haploid will fuse together to form a diploid structure and that diploid structure is called as the zygote and that's why the zygote will be having the ploidy to it now if we talk about the embryo we know very well when mitosis occur in zygote then the unicellular zygote is converted into the multicellular embryo okay but because the mitosis has happened in the zygote so there is no change in the ploidy level and hence the embryo will be also having the ploidy level to it now radical and plumule we know very well that radical and plumule respectively give rise to the root and the shoot radical give rise to root and plumule give rise to shoot okay and we know that root and shoot are what they are the diploid structure and radical and plumules are also diploid structures okay now if i talk about the cotyledon now we know very well that in dicot seeds two cotyledons are there and in monocot seeds there is one cotyledon okay so cotyledon whether it is present in a monocot seed or whether it is present in a dicot seed you must know that cotyledon is always having the ploidy level of 2n now new cells now what is new cells when we study the structure of the ovule then the tissue parenchyma test tissue which is found inside the ovule is called as the new cells and always remember that the new cells is a diploid tissue okay so that's why the new cells is having the diploidy okay or we can say that it its ploidy level is 2n integuments now integuments are the protective coverings found around the ovule okay if a ovule is having two protective coverings two integuments then the ovule is called as a bitegmic and if there is one protective covering or one integument around the ovule it is called as unitegmic condition so whether a ovule is a unitegmic or a bitegmic it doesn't means integuments are always integuments are always having the ploidy level of 2m now microspore mother cell we know very well that anther is called as anther is having the microsporangia okay now the inside the microsporangium what is there microspore mother cell is found okay so my in microsporangium microspore mother cell is found and microspore mother cell is always diploid why because it undergoes meiosis and it will form later on microspores so always the microspore mother cell present in the microsporangium is having the ploidy level of 2n exactly in the same way megaspore mother cell megaspore mother cell are found inside the megasporangium what is megasporangium ovule so ovule or the megasporangium consist of a megaspore mother cell and megaspore mother cell just like the microspore mother cell is 2n okay now ovary wall we know very well that the carpel consist of three parts stigma style and ovary and ovary is surrounded by ovary wall so it is also having the ploidy level of 2n now the four worlds of the flower that is sepal petal stamen and carpel all are having the ploidy level of 2n and also many times the question is asked that if the ploidy level of the leaf is so and so right if the ploidy level of root is so and if the ploidy level of the stem is so and so then what will be the ploidy level of the different uh, parts of the plant so you must remember that leaf root and stem as they are the part of the diploid plant they are the vegetative part of the diploid plant so leaf root and stem all have the ploidy level of 
to men. So all these structures, that is, I am repeating once again, zygote, embryo, radical, primule, cotyledon, new cellus, integument, microspore mother cell, megaspore mother cell, ovary wall, carpal, sepal, petal, stamen, and carpal, right? And the leaf, root, and the stem, all are having the ploidy level of 2N, right? Means all these parts are sporophyte. Now, if we talk about the ploidy levels of the gametophytes, then always the ploidy level of the gametophytes will be N. Now, see here, if I talk about the ploidy level of the microspore, microspore is also called as a pollen grain. We know very well that when microspore mother cell, which is having the ploidy level of 2N, when it divides by meiosis, it produces the microspore. And that's why, because it is the product of the meiosis, so the ploidy level of this microspore will be N. Now, tube cell and generative cell. We know that tube cell and generative cells are formed in the nucleus, or we can say this by the nucleus of the pollen grain. When the nucleus of the pollen grain divides, two nuclei are formed first that are known as the tube nuclei and the vegetative nuclei and later on by the cytoplasm division tube nucleus and tube cell and generative cells are produced and because they are actually formed inside the pollen grain and pollen grain is haploid okay so tube cell and generative cell will also be haploid only okay now if we talk about the male gamete okay we know very well that gametes are always haploid cells Okay, whether it is a male gamete or it is a female gamete doesn't matter. Gametes are always haploid. So male gamete is haploid. Now megaspore. Now when the megaspore mother cell present in the megasporangium divides, so it was the diploid cell, when it will be divided by meiosis, what will be formed? Megaspore will be formed. And megaspore is definitely it will what haploid? Embryo sac. Now what is embryo sac? The megaspore, the functional megaspore forms the embryo sac. If megaspore is haploid and megaspore forms the embryo sac, then definitely the embryo sac will also be haploid. And that's why embryo sac is also called as female gametophyte. Embryo sac is also called as female gametophyte. Okay. So, Embryo sac is also known as N. Now, synergids and antipodals. We know very well that when we study the structure of the ovule, inside the ovule, embryo sac is present. And in embryo sac, antipodal cells are present at one pole and synergids are present at the another pole. And both synergids and antipodals are haploid. Okay. Now, XL, XL which is present in the embryo sac, which is acting as a female gamete, which is acting as a female gamete, right, will also be having the ploidy level of haploid. Why? Because gametes are always haploid. And if we see the structure of the embryo sac, then at the center, two polar nuclei are present, right? And each polar nuclei is having the ploidy level of N. Okay, so polar nuclei, there are two polar nuclei and each polar nuclei is having the ploidy level of N. But just before fertilization, but in the case of the angiosperms, just before the fertilization, these two polar nuclei fuse together to form a diploid structure, which is actually known as a, a 2N, secondary nucleus, we can call it a secondary nucleus or a 2N structure is formed. Right, so these were the ploidy level of the microspore tube cell and generative cell, male gamete, megaspore, embryo sac, synergids, antipodals, X cell and two polar nuclei. All have the haploidy or we can say it as the ploidy level is N. Okay. Now one more thing you must know that in the case of the gymnosperm, the endosperm is haploid. In the case of the gymnosperm, the endosperm is always haploid because it is formed before fertilization. But if we talk about, but if we talk about the endosperm, in the case of the angiosperm, it is triploid, that is 3N, and it is formed after fertilization, and it is the product of double fertilization. So, dear student, this video was based on the ploidy level in different parts of the plant, which may be helpful uh, to solve many questions. 
so thanks a lot for watching hope so you have liked this video if you want to take the screenshot of this video you can take